chose Edward Adolf because my area um, of interest is exercising the heat. And he was basically a scientist who wrote a real seminal book that everybody knows, which is called Physiology of the Man in the Desert. It was done during the Second World War in the 40s. He was basically in the desert and because it was a wartime, there was a lot of soldiers um, that he was working with. So mainly it was the American military um, that he was trying to help and develop some understanding. So he was just monitoring a lot of the military. Now, some people were subjects who he worked with, who they did more in-depth research on, and some of it was just observations of how the military were. The experiments he did there have basically impact upon everything that we do as human beings. This book is basically full of chapters that develop the story of how we respond when we're in the desert, so in a hot, in this case, a hot, dry environment. So a group of scientists that Adolf led from Rochester went across the desert and stayed there for three or four months. And each chapter just develops a bit more understanding of how we can survive in those extreme environments and how the human responds to those sorts of things. So some of the chapters particularly focus, and there's a big development through the book about sweating and dehydration and how those two interact. And one of the things that's really interesting is he says, the first time you go to this environment, as he did, he himself noted within two or three days how much better he began to feel. So that was sort of the start of how we acclimatise. The scientists themselves were finding out not only about the military which they were using and investigating, but themselves on how you can adapt quite quickly and how crucial it is that when you go to a hot environment, during the first day you take it easy and you drink the right things and things that we perhaps take a bit for granted now, they were actually feeling for the first time. found quite quickly is that the amount we drink and again this is really crucial now we still study this is the fact we tend to not replace the amount we sweat with water and that's crucial because over time we become dehydrated and he was seeing that just that even then with soldiers so something that we now know a lot more about and we tell people to actually drink what we call 150 percent of what they lose he was actually finding that out in the soldiers and one of the other key findings was that if you are dehydrated and that was happening with the soldiers day after day they weren't able to replace enough fluids they actually get hotter so your deep body temperature goes up and again that impacts upon your your how you feel how much work you can do so the soldiers who were doing a lot of work were getting very hot and then perhaps suffering from heat stroke whereas the ones who were not doing as much work could last longer to us now that probably seems you know, quite a small point, but it meant from that point forward they could begin to help the military to make sure they do drink enough. So Adolf did all his research in a desert because that was his environment and one of the things in his book he says is that from now on physiologists will be continuing to go to the desert to do this sort of, a, this sort of work. Fortunately, I don't go to the desert. What we do is we have an environmental chamber here which basically allows me to simulate any environment in the world and so that's how we're able to now I guess move his research onto real mechanistic stuff. So he had some basic mechanisms which still hold true today but what we're doing is looking at a deeper level. So a real simple example is he found out how important sweating is. We now know how those mechanisms work I guess a bit more and how your individual sweat glands develop and, and all those sorts of things. Uh, it would have made his life easier, but you can tell from his book that he was really passionate about where he was, you know, in the real environment. So there is bits in the chamber I can't do very well. So, so the sun here today, radiant heat is really important. You know, we could put some kind of filter in there to produce radiant heat, but it's not the same. So there's also really good reasons for doing it in the environment themselves. One of his big passions was encouraging scientists, and so he was given several awards for education. How the best ways we can educate people to develop an understanding in science and how important science is and the way we teach science is so important. For me, I think that's, you know, it's fundamental to what we do. So, you know, he was archetypal in one area, but there's so many areas that, you know, people can look at. And whether that's children who just take a bit more time to look around them and have a bit more interest in, the, in science, or whether that's, you know, top professors, I think the way we teach science and we put the messages across is crucial for what we do. And, you know, that was one of the big things he became famous for as well as his actual research.